Hall. He is a former SNL star, Emmy-winning writer. You also know him from movies like Deuce Bigelow, Grown Ups, Bench Warmers, The Water Boy. You can do it. It's Rob Schneider. Hey, Rob. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Val. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be coming to the Windy City just, hey. in, time for, just in time for restaurants to close down Friday. <laughs> Well, uh, you get here tomorrow, so... Thank you, Lori. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, Thank you, Lori Lightfoot. <laughs> we love Lori here, and hopefully... Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to enjoy a little bit of our nice weather, because we're getting a rare 76 degrees oh, on October in Chicago. Yeah, you better enjoy that for about 80 minutes. <laughs> enjoy it. Oh, I'm excited about that. I am. Obviously, just... you're coming into Chicago. You got some comedy shows. We've mm. all missed comedy. We've missed live performances. I know. Yeah. I tell you, the only thing I've done is these car shows, Ryan. When <laughs> David Spade called me, go, hey, buddy. And I go, hey, you, you want to perform? I said, I don't think we're allowed to perform it. No, they got these car shows. And I go, what is that? Well, you're in your car. Well, the audience is in their car, and you're on stage. And I go, how do they hear you? They turn on the radio in their car. Yeah. How do you know when you're getting a laugh? I said, will you hear, eh, eh. <laughs> and I was, I was driving home, and, and uh, I cut somebody off, and he honked at me, and he like, eh. I went, oh, he was at the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really strange time. But hey, speaking of David Spade, so I, I, I am a huge SNL guy. I go way back to the very beginning. I've seen the old shows. I'm not that old, but I've seen all of the episodes. Okay. Wow, those are good times. You were a part of one of the most iconic casts. You, Sandler, uh, Chris Farley, Chris Rock, David Spade, known as the bad boys of SNL. I mean, what do you treasure most about those days? Um, still seeing those guys. I mean, the memories of it. I mean, just being out there with, like, I remember when Chris Farley did his Chippendales routine. I was standing right next to this, right next watching it. And I was, I think he's going to be, he's going to be famous now after this. You know? <laughs> and that's what did it, you know, because he was just such a funny physical guy and he was athletic and graceful. He just had too much body, you know, as like a normal dancer, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but he's lovely and a fun, you know, I remember when I was in Chicago uh, and I was doing comedy and he came by <laughs> and it just, you know, the party started and it never ended. Till I got on the plane and I was like, wow, that was fun. You were always guaranteed to laugh at least a half a dozen times every time you saw Chris. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. fun. So I love coming to Chicago. It's a great city, great comedy city. I mean, most of the guys who came to SNL were either stand ups or coming from Second City. Right, right. Hey, Rob, which of your uh, characters that you've played on screen do people expect to see or want you to do at your shows? Oh. Which I don't know. I mean, I, I think they yell out sometimes, you can do it, you know, pretty, pretty much every show. I, I yell it out before they do, kind of beat them to the punch. So they, they have, you know, so they can just sit back and relax and watch. Because there's a lot to talk about right now. Yeah. You know? I like how, like, Chicago was one of the places that, like, it, it seemed to be, like, the most level-headed, nicest people on the planet, or at least in this country, for sure. And then, like, you guys in the summertime completely lost your minds. I don't know what happened, but like people there were the looting and stuff. And I, and I don't want to make, I'm not going to, you know, get into it too much, but just like the fact that, that the police weren't allowed to arrest anybody unless they were stealing $800 worth of merchandise. And it's like, it just made all the, all the police traffic cops. And it was like, all right, looters, only five looters in the store at a time. Come on. We got a live virus out there. Everybody stay at least. Two flat screen TVs apart at a time, please, everybody. Hey, arrest that guy. He's got an Apple Watch. Oh, it's a Fitbit. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. So these are all things that you will address on stage. I just watched your Netflix special, which is really funny. Thank Asian you. mama, Mexican kids. You talk a lot about your upbringing. Do you, you actually yeah. tell a story about almost getting into bed with your mother-in-law. I, I, <laughs> it's a true <laughs> story. Did that really happen? Yes. I mean, everything. I mean, that's where the jokes come from at this point in my life. Well, because um, our babies, they, they come and sleep, you know, sneak in bed with us. And I love it. You know, truthfully, we spoil our kids because they're only kids for such a short time, you know, and I'm an older dad anyway. So, you know, the, I remember like at one of the pediatric, for, you know, doctors telling us like, you got to let the baby sleep by himself. Babies need to be. And I said, like, tell that to a gorilla. Tell the gorilla he can't hold his baby all night. I said, I don't know if I buy that. And so, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's been a blast, you know, and then sometimes 
I'll sneak out because I got to get some sleep because the babies come in the bed and I can't sleep in there. So I'll go to some part of the house and I'll, I'll sleep somewhere else. And then I thought my wife, because my wife wasn't in this bed, I thought she was in that bed and it turned out to be my mother-in-law. But <laughs> I found out in the morning it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that again. Yeah, yeah, but I bet you you do get a lot of material from being an older dad with two girls and yeah. like on that. I mean, what's I like what- it. It's beautiful. My my um I really cuz I really enjoy it cuz you realize how fast it really goes by when you're getting older, you know. And you got a lot when you have when you have a baby and you're an older dad, you have so much in common with the baby, you know, cuz you both you know, you wake up, you have no idea where you are, you know, you cry for no reason, you need help getting out of the bath. It's all these things are <laughs> well, Rob, this is great information because um, not that Ryan is an old by at Wait all. Wait a minute. He just had a birthday, but he is a young 40-something, and um, yeah. he, no kids yet. So I'm sure he's over no there. No kids? N- yeah. Ryan, just jump in and do it, man. No, you sound like my pops over there, Rob. You got to do it. It's beautiful. I don't know. It's just it's just gorgeous. You know, it's like the best thing you could do in your life is to have these little, little kids around you. My Are you done, bit. Rob? Do you want huh? more? Or are you done? Uh, I'm officially done now. I actually flew out. My friend of mine, um, uh, my buddy from Chicago, Chaz Edelstein, he's best friends with my guy. So I've become best friends with him, Dr. Basil Salemi. And, uh, and he is a doctor in, in, in the Midwest, in Milwaukee. So when I said, if I'm going to have a vasectomy done, I'm going to have him do it. So I flew out there a few weeks ago and had it done. <laughs> and it was great. And it's on Instagram. Of course. That, that's what people do now. Yeah. You, you, get a, you get a procedure done on your genitals, you put it on Instagram. <laughs> that's right. I saw Anthony Anderson was just putting his colonoscopy on there yesterday. Yeah. Uh, before we let you go, before uh, while we're talking about kids, I had no idea for the longest time that L. King is your daughter, the multi-platinum singer who is fantastic. And the, the two of you have actually performed together. Yeah, we performed together on, a, on the, my comedy special on Netflix, uh, Asian Mama Mexican Kids, and we never performed live, you know, publicly, and then certainly not on television. So I said, "Why don't you come out and we'll do it?" And so she picked the song and did the arrangement, and then and, um, and it was fun. And I, and she's been, uh, I'm really proud of her, and I don't blame her for changing her name because when she was um, to L King, because when when she would go to school, if, if I did one of my silly movies, she would like not go to school that Friday or that Monday to see like the feel of the land, you know, how it went, you know, dad, you didn't tell me you're going to show your butt again, you know? And uh, so, I mean, I, I get it. And uh, but she's a great kid. She's really talented and I'm really happy for her. She just got engaged. So she's going to get married next year. So I'm very excited for her and just her life. She moved out to Santa Fe. She's got a farm and animals. You can follow her on Instagram and she's having a great time. That's all you could ever want for your kids to be happy and be doing what they love. Tell me about it. One day, Ryan will be able to relate to that, but I sure do know what you mean, Rob. Ryan, jump in. Don't think twice about it. Just pick pick a girl this weekend, Chicago. Very nice girls. <laughs> when you come in town. Just right we'll, before the restaurants close, just go to one of the bars Thursday night. For, all right, well, when you come in town, we'll do that, and then I'll, I'll know I can get the vasectomy through your guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easily done. Thanks One-stop so shop. Yeah, Rob, you've been great. Thanks so much. You can catch Rob at the Improv Comedy Club in Schaumburg this week from Thursday. We'll be open.